Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to NBOT. That's nobody on time. You know it, I know it. Your third uncle twice removes knows it. It's me, it's me, it's just Sal hanging out with the man back from his legendary campaign, Enrique. Right, that's right, man. Vacation is on the way to being over, uh, but nothing's over until we say it is. So I still got the weekend going, and uh, we're looking kind of good over here. L loving vacation right now, loving to be unplugged. I haven't really looked at any emails, and I haven't looked at anything, except when you guys text me here and there, I'll jump in and help out, of course. Uh, but you guys have been handling business. I checked in with uh, my guy, Nahe. He says you guys have been all over it, so I appreciate that. Yeah, it may seem totally collected, calm, and cool, but oh boy, it oh is boy. not. It is uh, unnecessarily dramatic. Today is the slowest day on the human earth. <laughs> it's just <laughs> nothing will end and everything will stop, and it's yeah, it's it's a headache, and it's only going to get worse hypothetically for me because you know Germania starts her PTO this upcoming week. So That's she'll right. be out for the full five days, and I can only end with, like, our field supervisor essentially, um, you know, handcuffed to another site because of, you know, cross-training limitations. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be rough. That's all right, dude. I'm coming back for you, though. I'm, I'm back, refreshed, so whenever you need to tap me in, I'm holding on to a little piece of string by the turnbuckle, waiting for you to just tap me in so I can jump in and uh, do what I need to do. Oh, no, you're starting the match, bro. I'm on the outside. So I'm not starting anything ever. <laughs> there's, there's so much that needs to be done that still needs to be done. But it's just... I can only imagine. Being able to... I mean, multitasking is part of this job, right? Like, that's that's a given. It's, it's an immediate requirement to be able to, you know, just juggle endlessly uh, until complete exhaustion take a two-minute break and just get right back into it. But, yeah, it's good to hear that you're super energized. It's good to hear that you have uh, some positive mental momentum coming into this upcoming Monday because uh, you're going to need it. <laughs> there's a, I, I bet. There's a nice but, handful you know, of stuff. So Positive note, though, mm -hmm. I, was, I was in our little program that tracks all of our metrics, mm -hmm. and it's possibility we're uh, we're bonus qualified, man. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we are. Uh, Germania yeah, has been absolutely kicking all forms of the butt in regards to our Pluto system. Like she was, there was a noticeable amount of red that's like no, you know, no control, no power to her that it came up the way that it did. Just a lot of officers just choosing, you know, to ignore yeah. instructions or just be too intimidated by the program or so even with the our new field manager going out there and kind of giving them the more like calmer okay baby's first phone like let's let's take a look <laughs> at it and, but uh yeah she's like completely 180 her numbers which is like extraordinarily awesome oh, she, she, she needed that nice like smooth bump going into the weekend uh ironically that bump was turned into a crater like near immediately where we oh, find out tell. that um so she has a couple sites that have mandatory inspections not something that's very casual it's something that's much more like in depth that uh Absolutely. requires an admin to go to these sites to complete these tasks that are digitally tracked and um then automatically uploaded to the client uh it was, so she was told earlier in the week that the second inspection was done and over with and everything's cool and then she finds out today that that was not the case and she had to kind of revert one of our field admins to go out there to to finish it which is why she was uh much more vocal in our in our group chat between you know yourself me and, and her Cause she's like, what, how do I, how do I explain this to this person who's never done it before? Let me do this. Let me do that. Can you give me a rundown Enrique? And then you just gave, you know, your bullet point thing. Yeah. So yeah, it was a, it was a scramble to get it done. Like to tomorrow, hypothetically tomorrow, Friday would be the last day to do it. So she's trying to get our field manager to get it done before she's tagged to this overnight site 
um, where she won't be available to uh, to do stuff like that. So we had we had that. Um, what else did we have? We had our nice little meeting with uh, a former manager who's still active in the system to try and figure out, you know, WTF is going on here and why are we getting, why suddenly are we getting all this pushback? Because not only is it the stereotypical pushback that a client would give when, when they don't like something, you know, Babby's yeah. going to cry. But, um, I mean, there was a lot of like coincidental actions that like suddenly turned up because when you just approve the same thing over and over and over for, you know, 12 to 18 months and then suddenly it's like whoa i don't like that anymore uh it raises eyebrows and not even the people's eyebrow it just raises the full corporate the corporate rock eyebrow yes and uh yes, the so people's eyebrow. they bring in they bring in this former manager who i've essentially replaced without replacing um to say hey like we've known you a long time you've been here a long time we need some honesty so that we can, you know, kind of put up our own wall and, and fight back appropriately. And uh, the manager was adamant that everything that he said is what he said. And he was able to kind of articulate it a little bit, a little bit better than what he was, he's been doing before. So he had a little bit more like rhyme to the reason, so to speak. But, um, I mean, it was still a lot of non-answers in my opinion. But it was enough of an answer to to kind of calm down the big wigs in our ranch, yeah. To give them a little bit more, like okay, like that's that's enough rope for me. Like I can work off that. But you have to understand that the like you gave me two two feet out of a fifty foot rope, and the forty eight feet the client has already tugged, pulled, cut, you know, worn out, ripped apart. It's tethered. Like it's just it's going to be a tough battle. And I'm getting, I'm like a glorified middleman now. So the client is trying to push back on um, certain invoices and certain dollar amounts. And uh, it's not cheap what they think they're finding. And uh, suddenly they're using computers, suddenly they're using cameras, and they're using badge system. They're, they're going through all these hoops and and trials and tribulations. They're literally... You know, fighting the lion and whipping the elephant to uh, get all this like backlog of how this is not real, or they think it's not real, or X officers there, but Y officer isn't, and Z officers like in his car or whatever. And I'm like, that's a lot of effort, um, because you don't like the bill that you've been paying for the last like near, you know, year and a half, two years. Suddenly, it's weird. But it is not. I had a conversation with uh, our boss's boss, mm -hmm. and uh, we went over a lot. Like they felt better about like the conversation they're going to have with the client over all this after mm -hmm. the conversation they had with the account manager. Mm -hmm. um, so it sounds like he's going to be off that hook, man. Yeah, I think like, he'll be okay. Yeah. I mean, they, he's still on the on the bench because you know they can't take him off the bench until it's all done. But like. I was very adamant to make sure that he was still getting paid while he's on the bench, one way or another, either paying him outright or use, like allowing us to use his PTO. So I was very adamant to push that. Oh, he's um, he's gonna be our he's gonna be our Lonzo Ball. Where's so, that? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, not too much credit. Let's calm down a little bit. But yeah, like he'll be. Uh, <laughs> it, he's he's you know I made sure that he was secured because hey, he's a tenured guy. Like you know. Yes. You don't mess around with people like that. Like that's a level of experience that you you can't give up on like immediately. Especially when there's enough evidence to show that like what's being done is a little fishy. Like even for me and I'm not that experienced with invoices or like this level of client interaction. Even I'm saying that it's it looks super, weird. Like it looks very It's super weird. sus. It's yeah, super it's sus weird. what happened there. It's super sus. But if we if we go ahead and crucify him, that means we're admitting guilt to the client. Yeah, and it's so not just it's not yeah. just about his hypothetical inactivity. It's right. about everything: the schedule, the officers, the pay rates, yeah, and all this stuff. Yeah, no, the, um, the amount of money we would have had to give him back if like everything was not 
on par or not up to code or not up to just the level that is expected would have been catastrophic. Yeah. Um, definitely would have affected us financially with our end of the year bonus. So yeah, don't, I don't mean, bonuses aside, it's that. just, it's all frustrating. Yeah. No, it's, it's a big, big uh, chunk of money that they're trying to dispute. And it sounds like uh, they requested a lot of that coverage just wasn't through the normal channels. So now yeah. it comes down to, all right, well, you requested it. You paid for it. Now you can't come back yeah. and say, hey, it's not our coverage. So, yeah. you know, we just got, we got to stand, you know, very firm here. I get it's a huge client for us, but we yes. have to stay firm and make sure that we're just very, you know, deliberate of how yeah. we're going to tell them what we're going to do, what we're not going to do. We'll take some ownership, you know, maybe on, on the part of like his inactivity, maybe a, a you know, a discount there yeah. or something. But well, even if that's the case, that. if they're, if they're being so like hard pressed about, I'm checking the camera system for every officer that may or may not be on the site at the scheduled listed time, then you should be able to see him. You should be able to see the manager who claims That's to be able to rotate true. between the sites without any type of badge activity, which is 100% accurate. So you can't, there's no way that you can tell me that you've gone through, you know, one to two weeks of um, camera assessment to verify people's presence and then not see him. Because there's no way that you're just going to look through the first 15 minutes of the shift and walk away. Because I went out there to verify one of my officer who requested back pay because the schedule wasn't accurate. So I had to go out there and I was like, hey, can you help me look this up? And I sat next to this person while we were looking it up day by day, camera by camera. And it was not like, oh, let's let's just go, you know, time six speed, go from, you know, 15 minutes before the shift to 45 minutes after the shift started. No, she's going... 2x we're just sitting there looking at it slowly and i'm telling her i go you can go faster it's okay to go faster like we know what he looks like i'm looking for this one specific person and you can have like multiple cameras up at the same time so i'm like i'm not here to tell you your job and i appreciate you helping me but like i got things to do lady like let's move it along <laughs> like again another person with tech that they've used forever then I'm like, what are you? Why are we looking at this at two x speed? Like, I just need to see that the guy showed up. I don't need to see him walking in, you know, juggling his shoes, high fiving the next guy, going in the corner, being on his phone. Like, I don't need all this extra. I just need to figure out what the heck's going on, so that we can move along. So there's that, and then of course with this team that's in this location, this specific team from all this upper management stuff that we've been talking about. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. I'm just no, so, I'm no, so that, tired yeah, of talking no, about this, bro. It's so exhausting. <laughs> well, it's also my fault we're recording so late. No, it's not. Yeah. I mean, I would have been up anyways. We would have probably finished maybe 20 minutes ago and I still would have been editing. That's that's beside the point. But what it is is that it is, exa it is exhausting talking about this like one group of because this is all I've been talking about for the last like yeah. three and a half weeks. It's it's yeah right. it's mind right. numbing. So it took me about three weeks to readjust the schedule so that everyone gets their hours right. We're on a more like regulated schedule instead of like all these part timers that are just randomly plugged through. Like, why would you hire someone to work just two random days during the week? Like that makes no sense to me. So I'm trying to like. Okay, here are all the uh, here's the readjustments for each shift. Let's go through seniority, which is I know I've talked about this before. Let's go through seniority yes. with people. Okay, pick the shift, pick the shift, pick the shift. Now I'm gonna show up for second shift, pick the shift, pick the shift. Let me do multiple visits on the overnight, pick the shift, pick the shift, pick the shift. And then what happens two days ago? Everyone's like, Yeah, I don't like that anymore. I'm just gonna do what I'm doing. I'm like, well, that's not how this is working. Okay, the schedule changes are happening. You're not gridlocked to the schedule you were hired for. That's not how contract security works. You have two weeks to readjust or you're being removed. All right. And I'm like, there's clear, like now, now I have to be the bad guy. You're forcing me into this corner because here I was trying to make it awesome for everybody so that everyone got a consistent 40 hour schedule with none of this, you know, 
unnecessary overtime added in. I don't need you to work six days. I need you to work five like a normal human being. You can't complain about being tired and exhausted and then complaining about being broke at the same time. I'm literally giving you more money now. I'm back paying you more money from when the official like update went for this year. It's like I'm, I'm converting your file so that it's consistently more money all the way through and I'm giving you a consistent shift. I go, most people take three to six months to get that done, and I finished it in two and a half to three weeks. Yeah, I go, impressive. and now you're telling me, go F myself, I'm just going to stay at what I'm staying. I'm like, well, okay, 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 cool, do that. So understand that I'm going to find something to replace you then. And and then we'll just, we'll, we'll figure out the rest of it later. And then I get shrugged at, I get eyes rolled, like suddenly all these 55-year-olds turn into 15-year-olds. <laughs> and I gotta deal with all that shenanigans. I'm like, you're you're ridiculous. Like what you I'm literally handing you money. I'm putting more money in your pocket. I'm giving you more freedom for your personal time. You're able to go see your wife or your kids or your nephew or whatever. All these stories that I get bombarded with for the last two and a half, three weeks about how they can't do this and they can't do that. I gotta pay my baby mama, my insurance is too high, my Uber's too big. And I'm like, cool, I've solved all your problems on paper. Now we just need to execute together. And they're like, yeah, never mind. I, I liked what I liked before. Because right. it was consistent. That's right, man. You can't, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. I'm not trying to teach them anything new. They're literally doing the same thing. Just one day to the right. That's all. That's all it was. Just one day to the right. So I, I was like, whatever. I was like, whatever. I'm going to reset the schedule again. I'm going to do it all again next week, maybe. Uh, which I probably can't because I'm going to help cover for uh, Germania stuff. So, like, I, oh, who yeah. knows? Who knows what I'll do? I might just go crazy. Who knows? <laughs> and then I had to run, like, the meeting for this client today, which is, like, a bi-weekly thing that we do. And, like, no one wants to talk. No one wants to chit-chat. I got two laughs out of my jokes. Good jokes. Solid jokes. Solid oh, you made jokes? You made jokes on that? Solid call? corporate jokes. I go, hey, wow. Enrique may be sleeping, but I'm awake. Let's go for it, everybody. <laughs> I go, you know, Big J, give me give me the rundown of what you got going on over there. And then he tells oh, me man. his thing. I'm like, okay, do we have a client rep for uh, Big J over here to confirm everything? Yeah, yeah, we love what's going on and blah, blah, blah. Cool. Well, all right, my turn, because it would have been my turn anyway. Right. So, hey, here's, here's what I'm doing. Everything looks good. I've had no compliance issues. I've had no, you know, officer issues. I've had no scheduling issues. It seems that, like, all of my supervisors are fully trained for the unlock procedure and the lockup procedure. Everyone has badges where they should. Everything's great. Anybody on your end want to talk about how great I am? Ha, 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 ha. Okay. <laughs> What's his name? Big S is telling me, yeah, everything's cool. I'll send you an email if anything pops up. Big L is like, yeah, everything's cool. I literally have nothing to talk about. All right. Well, you know, Mr. Big, Big, Big Boss. Hey, I saw you sent an email about wanting to change the topic of this of this meeting that we do every two weeks. Was there an ETA on that? Did you have any insight? Did you get enough replies? Well, you know, Sal, I actually didn't get a lot of replies, so I didn't really talk about it. We're just going to keep doing what we're doing here and just let the wheel turn. Oh, all right. Yeah. All right. You got it, big, big, big boss on this recorded you know, thing. Thanks for thanks for confirming, even though you didn't confirm via email. But I had to find out because now I just kind of tricked you into an answer. But all right. So everyone enjoy your weekend. Have a good one. Don't go too crazy. See you in two weeks. That's such an annoying five-minute call. Yeah. It just doesn't, doesn't need to happen. Rolling into another call or something. Like, this doesn't need to happen. It's so bad. Because the two spots that are being covered now are running smoothly. Are running so yeah, smoothly they, that it's yeah. beyond recognition. And it they, should they rotate have, into these other spots, which right, I know are, are problematic. Issues. Yeah, that are having yeah. issues. But, like, no one wants to talk about those. Yeah, we don't talk about Bruno. So, we just don't, yeah, nobody talk about Bruno. <laughs> no. I've been watching that a lot this week. I don't know oh, why my I kids know. suddenly got into it, but they did. That's funny. I think it's it's, it's recommended from Moana. So, if you see Moana, Encanto is like one I've of those. I've finally seen, finally seen Moana, bro. Oh, great. I mean, you should have seen it way earlier. Your son was I like, the I need, right? <laughs> yeah, I should have, and I never did. So after watching it, I went back to him and said, bro, you did a really good job. Yeah, 
Yeah. Like based on what I saw, like I like I mm-hmm. I knew everything that going on because of the play. I know it was more abbreviated, but like I told him, like you did a really good job. He's like, yeah, I know. Like he's super cocky now because he just had a talent show where the man was the an MC, which is funny because I was MCing that the thing I was doing the tour the same day that he was MCing the uh, the talent show. Then he did a solo song where he absolutely killed it. And I, you know, I get all the reports from everyone that went. His mom went, his grandparents went. And I'm like, you know, how did he do it? Oh, he did fabulous. And he's just sitting there like, yeah, I know. The confidence is up on this kid. And I, I appreciate that. Because he's not one. He's always like a nervous wreck when it comes to these shows. Uh, when he's going on stage and stuff, he's a nervous wreck. He won't let me listen to the songs ahead of time. I have to like, the first time I hear it is when he's on stage. And like, that's the first time I ever hear him sing the song because he won't do it for me in private. Um, and now for him to be like cocky about stuff, I mean, it's nice. Uh, hopefully, he doesn't take it for granted or whatever. But like, he's put a lot of hard work into it, and it's 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 shown every time he's performed, and he's gotten better every time too, which is nice. That's good. That's good. One each Absolutely. step at a time. I'm glad you were able to listen to it. The Rock actually did all of his songs. So any point where Maui yeah. was singing, The Rock actually sang all that. Yeah, no, it was good. It was a good movie. And I guess they're doing, or they're almost done with the production or filming of the live action version of that, with him being Maui again. Oh, really? Yes. Really? That is a thing that is happening. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Solid movie. You know what else is a solid movie? It means that, uh, what's his name, won't go beyond WrestleMania, because they'll have to do (laughs) post-production. So, you know, the story will end one way or another at WrestleMania. Spoiler alert! Spoiler Spoiler alert! Spoiler! Real life spoiler. <laughs> I I went to go see Godzilla versus King Kong. Oh yeah, fun. Question mark. Very good movie. Good. Very good movie. Good. I liked it. I liked the way that they brought the uh, was it the butterfly out the the Sal like uh, <laughs> Titan was that Monarch is that Monarch, that's in the yeah. name Yeah. So no, that was cool the way that happened. Um. Because you're on like the Kong, you're on like the Kong side of this like altered universe on Earth though, right? Yeah, the and then shallow. They all, and they all kind of come back and yeah, yeah. It's good no, stuff. So, it's, solid it's, movie. Solid monster movie. movies are always fun. Monster movies. Yeah, are no, always solid fun. My kids, my kids absolutely love it. Like we got there late, so like I had to get all the snacks and stuff, and I was like, just go. I got to hear the seats are picked out. Just go. They got there. Caesar was kind of upset that. Uh, that was already like a couple minutes in, so like he was really wanting to see this movie. Oh no, um, it's okay. Yeah, have him go I see uh, if they get a chance. Have him go see that Godzilla minus one. That's like, that's a, an amazing, okay, um, amazing out. monster movie. Especially if they enjoyed this with Godzilla being in it. Oh yeah, or the no, one they, before they that it. with Godzilla being. Even they had Mecha Godzilla, you know, in the other uh, yeah uh, movie or whatever. Well, he's um he's he's gone back and seen a lot of stuff on like on Max, like the mm-hmm. older stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, like, like the they're, classic they're really, yeah. 1940s oh, yeah. rubber suits. Yes, yes. Back so when he's really could, into like, that. fly across the screen and stuff. <laughs> everything's on everything's on yeah. wires I'm you can see. Right. <laughs> the good old days. The good old days. The good old days where we used our imagination to get rid of the wire instead of green screen. Yeah, back when the Power Rangers were fighting the giant monsters and oh, yeah. those sound studios. The extra oh. hand motions and the fake sounds of their voice just always does it for me. Like it wasn't necessary to do all of the extra motions with their hands. If I could, now, if I could now, memorize the motions of like the Red Ranger and get into my car like that every day, I would do it. Just to give myself a little, a little positive start to the day. <laughs> Defeat all these phone calls that come bombarding at me at like seven, seven thirty in the morning, and just go full. Power Ranger Zoid with my car and <laughs> just jump into it. Like, if I could jump in through the roof of my car and just land oh, in my chair, I would yeah. I would love doing that as well. You just need some butter, dude. <laughs> yeah, and a, and a sunroof. <laughs> oh, you don't have a sunroof. No, I have it in your car. No, I don't. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Oh, good lord. Already getting calls. No, not already. Yeah. Yeah. So the the big big boss talked to me about that meeting. It just it oh, sounds good. like uh, it's <laughs> we're not gonna give in. So I'm hoping that that's that's the case. Yeah. I mean, I could understand kind of like bending over a little bit just for the sake of like you're a big time account. We're a big deal. This is a no right. This is a professional relationship that should continue. 
Um, let's not turn it into, you know, the TNT. What is the old coyote where it's like the line of uh, gunpowder dust leading to the big pile of yes. TNT barrels or whatever? Yes. Yes. Like, yes. let's try and avoid setting that on fire and uh, just focus on the nice, like, train that you, t- or the train tunnel that you drew on the mountain so that the Roadrunner can run into that. This focus so, on that. <laughs> well, I had him on the phone, though. He then talked to me about the hospital we have in Lake County. Oh, good Lord. The, they don't know what hands on means. What a cluster that is. <laughs> so, he, he's like, hey, man, can you correct me if I'm wrong? Aren't we already hands on there? Yeah. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure we help with restraints. I'm pretty sure we yeah. help, you know, when when, so, when the patient gets out yeah. of hand. I am pretty sure we do all that right now. He's like, well, they had a whole meeting about how they want us to start going hands on. Yeah. I was like, like, like well, a what super is that? What extended that mean? meeting. Like they've never yeah, done well, it before ever. No, right, which is which is ridiculous. And then I'm starting to hear that you know we're getting extra hours, and the account manager out there is is trying to do the same thing that's going on over at Bensonville. We're adding a bunch of stuff without yeah. getting proper approvals and stuff like that. So like that, that's also pretty ridiculous. And I saw that one email where he said, "Well, see that they promoted someone. Here's the approval, but like, where's the prom- where's the approval on the nine extra people you're trying to hire? Where where's that at, buddy? Like he's he's <laughs> I gotta have a nice talk to him when I get back. Yeah, uh, he is. Yeah, he's ridiculous. Like, yeah, how do you it's, not uh, get proper it's not good. approval? And it's one yeah. of these, and I'm I'm going back through the emails, and I'm going back through. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm going back through the emails and going back through all this correspondence, and I'm like, bro, who approved this? I'm yeah, I'm right. literally watching the same thing happen again at a different site with the same level of management. Like what? Who are you? Why do you think it's okay to just do things and then not tell anybody about it? Yeah, no, but, crazy. And, and that, so I'm going back and forth to kind of like, you know, um, as a courtesy, do all this emailing so that Germania doesn't have to worry about it because I'm there and I'm taking care I was, of it. I was wondering why you were on all the emails all of a sudden. Well, it's because the big boss came over to our national trainer who sits next to me. And he's like, hey, you guys have done hospital stuff, right? I was like, yeah, I started as like a hospital supervisor for like two years. He goes, when I tell you we go hands on, what does that mean to you? And I'm like, restraints, ER assistance, you know, we're not administering the medicine, but I'm holding the arm down when it's happening. He goes, yeah, almost every hospital system is set up that way because that's why we're there. Like, why else would we be there? And I guess Big Big Boss used to do that. Like when he was yes. a guard. Yes. So we're, worked, we're using worked. all these, we're using all this like colloquialisms and like it's all the same terminology no matter Man. what hospital you are at. So he's saying phrases, I'm saying phrases, our national treasure, our new treasure, <laughs> well he is a national treasure, <laughs> our national trainer is okay, saying okay, stuff. Nicholas Cage, okay yeah. Nicholas Cage, okay Nicholas Cage. And uh, I'm like okay cool, so like we're all on the same page, our, our, our definition, or our terms are all being defined the same way but like apparently the client out there doesn't understand what's going on and our account manager is just like open mouth drooling at the sky so i like, are trying <laughs> to figure that out and uh, i'm like well who did you talk to and he's like oh i talked to you know big wig one and big wig two i was like well did you get it on paper did you get it written or did you just shake hands and like say k hey, thanks bye and that was it and now they're telling you you're dumb and you're you're costing them too much money. On top of the fact that they're not even paying their bills, like why That's would you? What I, I was just gonna say. Why would I you double service. their staff when they're not even paying their bills at half the staff? And now they want us to go hands on, which is not like well, according to them, they want us to go hands on, even though we've been doing that apparently. Right. But like that's not cheap either because there's there's different pay rates and insurance and liability that right. goes into the training to go hands on because there's two ways that you can train it. There's like a, a very focused way that can be um, taught and administered from like the hospital itself. And then there's a different way that can be administered nationally, which like overrides the, the, the focus certificate. So there's like a focus certificate per hospital. And then there's like a national certificate that just covers everything. Yeah. And uh, of course our national trainer is like, why wouldn't we just do the, the national one, I can teach that. I'm certified to teach that. It's much more like in depth 
instead of like the baby version that they give you at the hospitals because the oh, baby right. version that's not really going to protect you that teaches you how to like de-escalate things verbally but it doesn't really teach you how to like fully go hands-on yeah. and i was like yeah no i remember and i pulled out like my old my old little like uh certificate oh, card did it. from like 2016. Oh, you did it. I was like, yeah, I still have it in my wallet. <laughs> I have my old <laughs> my old one in my wallet, even though I never needed it. You know, knock on wood, thank God. But like, yeah, yeah, we had that. And he's like, yeah, it's changed so much. And Red Cross used to do it. Now they don't do it. And blah 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 blah. And okay, so we we're all like hashing out like what it was to live the hospital life as a security <laughs> guard. You know, literally. Eight years ago, 18 years ago, and then who I didn't even give a number to our national guy for how long ago it was for him. But yeah, it's like uh, it was, it's, it's just I'm watching the same thing happen at a completely different site, in a completely different like field. Yeah, and we've told him over and over again like, don't just start, like, it has to get approved. Him and yeah. I had the conversation where he said, "Hey, they want to uh, get a bunch of uh, a bunch of guards to do this, to X." I said, yeah. "Have them send me in writing." I'm like, "I'm not doing anything." Yeah, we're not doing anything writing. like that. That's yeah. common again. Maybe it's not common sense. You know, maybe they are stuck in this old like '70s uh, Wall Street. Let me shake hands. Things are cool mode. That makes no the, sense to me. The problem is that the AM has been part of my collections. Um, uh, like strategy. He's yeah. the one that's been picking up checks. He's the one that's been delivering because yeah. they don't respond to me. So he knows that I've been like hounding them for money. Yeah, like he, pay he your bills. You know, f f you pay me. Yeah. Like what are we talking about? And like I've told him we're not doing anything because they don't pay their bills. Like we're not gonna increase the yeah. amount of their invoices that they're not gonna pay anyway. Yeah. So I, I had told him to stop. Like, what, what are we doing? Of course, they're like, yeah, add all this stuff. We're not going to pay for it anyway. Yeah. We're probably going to file bankrupt, and you guys are going to be you know, stuck with the invoice. Yeah. And it, it takes a negative hit to my metrics. And I'm like, stop. Don't do not do anything. And then, they, lo and behold, I find out that he's starting to hire for it. Yeah, that he tripled coverage. And then we, were, we had a uh, – I don't know if I talked to you about this, but we had a hiring event that was exactly. in the northern area. And he was supposed to be there, no showed, and just made his own hiring event yeah. in the facility. Right. <laughs> no one knows what the hell's going on. I was like, and, what are you and doing? This guy, and this guy is the worst offender when it comes to using our recruiting program and how to get them through the system. Yeah, he's he really loses them in the pipeline all the time because yeah. he's so terrible. Yeah. No, so like, what no are you doing? You know, you know what he's doing, though? He's having like four people sit down. And he's just going to be like, okay, four of you that I'm going to interview at the exact same oh, time. Uh, I guarantee you that's yeah. what's happening. It's our, it's your old, uh, yeah, your old field my, guy. My huh? old field guy, yeah. It's, yeah, 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 yeah. Mr. Clean. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ridiculous. So, like, that. That's, that's our two, like, nasty houses that are going on. My retail account and Germania's hospital account. They're just not doing that's fantastic. Ridiculous. Again, it's all, like... It, it's all completely manageable and like clearly the clock or the clock the wheel is still turning at these places but like the officers are making it more difficult the managers are making it more difficult something that could be solved in a month is now being solved in two and a half months because of just all this shenanigans yeah it's happening. ridiculous yeah, yeah no it's, i can't believe it's going on but yeah, <sighs> yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah every time i take a vacation something happens i mean that's how it goes right Exactly. That's why. That's why I didn't take a vacation for the first, you know, three years. <laughs> Whatever, man. I, that's why I just. I'm trying to set the example. Unplug and just don't respond mm -hmm. to anything. You're good. It's. It's. Yeah. it's you know, no matter what, when you clean up mess A, there's gonna be mess B, C, and D when you get back anyway. What does no, it matter? I don't like that Puerto Rican life. I don't want that Puerto Rican travel life. I'm just saying, it, it's gonna be there when you get back. What does it matter? Enjoy your time yeah. off. It's fine. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, all I'm saying. <laughs> Just enjoy your time off, dude. Because when when you get back from vacation, no matter how much prep you work, you try to do, there's still a big pile of dookie on there waiting for you. Yeah, I haven't even planned the next vacation. You I'm should. You need to because you have a lot of time. You have a lot of time. I have. Yeah, I have a bit. Have yeah, a, bit. a lot bit. Not not a bit. A lot. Plan a your bit ish. Time. A bit ish. Yeah. Plan your time to leave your phone. Yeah. Oh no. I Best thing that special. happened to me was getting two phones and not even paying attention to the work phone. I already have two phones. <laughs> yeah, the problem is you still look at the work one when you're on a vacation. 
Stop. Yeah, whatever. I'm being like that. No, stop. I'm not like Germania. Like I'll give it up, but. But what? But nothing. Just go. To, nothing. Go be a poo poo. I don't care. Do, do better. Just do better. <laughs> yeah, just do better. Just right. do better. Take my own advice. Just be yeah, better. take your own advice. Just do better. I do All tell right. Germania, give me your phone. So that's why we are the same person. Because we'll, 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 I'll fight you for my phone. I, I know. I already know. I got two of the hardest headed people that work for me in the office. It is so exhausting. Because I. I, 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 I just exuberate so much energy to try to get them to do stuff and i know that they're just not gonna do it yeah. they're just not gonna do it for whatever reason they're on it and, and they're all independent reasons yeah. why yeah. it's like you don't need it just unplug it's no reason there's no reason to have to do anything on while you're out i'll learn eventually you're gonna learn now bro like so I'll, you know what's maybe, funny was maybe next month <laughs> It, it, it's got to be me. I must be the problem because I used to have to go through the same thing with Nahe. And I actually had I had written a write-up for Nahe for insubordination for not leaving the phone. He was so <laughs> upset with me, bro. Ooh. He was so upset with me because this dude doesn't know how to turn anything off either. Yeah. doesn't want to turn anything off either. And I and the problem is he takes so much stress onto himself and it makes him sick. Like he was physically getting sick. And I said, bro take time off you're going to dubai like leave all yeah. your stuff here whatever he wouldn't do it he would still take his stuff still i'm like what are you doing he's working he's paying international fees for his cell phone to be able to work out there like um, what are you you're even wasting money on this like just that's stop. Too i want to do that yeah, well, I, mean, I would I just find it, a Wi Fi. Like... <laughs> <laughs> well, he was paying for Wi Fi. You paid oh, for Wi Fi. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. I mean, yeah, I get I it, but still crazy. Yeah, no, I, and I was like, look, dude. So I wrote the write up up. Bitch. And I, I had it on like my desk or whatever. He got so yeah, pissed got at me. He's cameras. like, oh, you know, everything that I do uh -huh. for you, you're going to write me up for that. And I'm just like, uh, no, bro. Like, I need you to pay attention and listen. Very cool. Very cool stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. I'm, yeah. I'm just saying. I'm just saying that that may be an option. Jack, you know, Johnny just... Johnny Knoxville's coming out with a new movie. I can't remember what it's called. He's actually not been bad. But um like, I liked him in Walking Tall. Yeah, like he's been the the Arnold movie. Uh, yeah. No, was it that the Arnold movie? No, that's a rock. That was the rock movie. Now he played alongside Arnold in another like cheesy kind of movie like that where like arnold was the the sheriff of this little town and no that's walking tall that's 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 the rock no i'm telling you that it's almost the exact same story no yeah so like johnny knoxville is just like you know uh uh someone who lives in this little town he's a weirdo guy that does weirdo things and arnold is like the sheriff and what's happening is there's like a um I don't know if it's like the mob or like the cartel or something that goes through their town to deliver like weapons or drugs or something bad. And Arnold's like, you know, nobody goes to my town. And it turns into this whole thing. And like Johnny Knoxville ends up setting up like a school bus with a minigun on it. Like, it's just really, oh my God. It's really crazy. And then Arnold fights like the mob boss or the cartel boss, like on a bridge that connects the town with like the state line or something like that but um like he just played you know johnny knoxville just played like a really goofy off the wall like almost oh, crazy old man character which is like you know that's the most that's, his, that's, his, that's his thing that's his staple yes that's but all he does the, the, the movie yeah uh, the, that's that's exactly what i was gonna say is that the movie that's coming out now is he's not playing that character he's like a disgruntled like bottom of his luck drunk Who's in this like uh, halfway house? And of course, like there's a bunch, there's a lot of actors. Like Theo Vaughn is in it, Bobby Lee is in it, um, Jay Moore is in it, and they're all like, you know, the house is going down and it's being like not leased but renovated or something like the like the state's eating it up essentially, and they have to raise eighty thousand dollars to keep the house. So it's really like bad news bears but adults i guess <laughs> so they all play like softball to raise this and like softball or baseball or whatever is what kind of gets johnny knoxville back on track and he wants to be a good role model for his child and, and blah, blah 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 so it's like this real like um not coming of age but you know it's that uplifting yeah. kind of like 
not rags to riches, but rags to stability kind of movie. No, right, right. So what well, he there is like a, there's the even the trailer has a couple moments where you're like, wow, that's uh, that's actually quite emotional for Johnny Knoxville. Like I'm I'm very curious at how they can turn the same exact theme movie of let's play sport to save location. <laughs> how can they make it more like today? If there's anyone though that could play a down on the luck kind of guy, like it's Johnny Knoxville. I mean, he he looks like the type that would yeah. be down as like alcoholic, laying in the gutter somewhere with a bottle in his hand and you know like piss stains on his on his pants. Like that <laughs> it's would, called, that it's would be called uh, the the movie I was thinking about was called The Last Stand with Arnold and Johnny Knoxville. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I gotta check that out. Yeah. I mean, if you like Arnold, it's worth it. It's not, but it, like, <laughs> <laughs> but it's but it is. Didn't he do uh, Bad Grandpa? Johnny Knoxville? Knoxville. Didn't he do Bad Grandpa? Isn't that him? No, wasn't that Zach Efron and like I could have um, swore he did a he did a grandpa movie, man. I could Oh he did he the did grandpa him. movie, but that was like like a jackass side yeah. movie. But I think they turned that skit into a movie. But Bad yeah, Grandpa, but I, I'm pretty sure was... Bad Grandpa is out Al, not Al Pacino. Is um Robert De Niro and Zach Efron? <laughs> I'm almost certain. Hold on, I'm looking up. Because it's like Robert De Niro. No, it's it's Jackass presents Bad Grandpa. What's the one I'm thinking of then? What's what's Zach Efron and, and let me look that up. Zach Efron and Robert Big Old Bobby De Niro. That's called Dirty Grandpa. Mm. I That's was right, so dirty. close. Yes, yes. <laughs> that was. <laughs> so I mean, close. bad, dirty is kind of the same. That's right? all the, the same. It's almost the same movie. <laughs> to be perfectly honest. <laughs> so we... Oh, you know, you know what? What movie I liked, Robert De Niro, that was totally out of character for him was The Intern. Oh yeah, with um, don't tell me um, um, the she, the Catwoman, mm. um, my mom, my mom, my mom. Oh, she was horrible in the female version of the Ocean's Eleven movie. Um, and and Anne Hathaway. Anne Hathaway, yeah. Yeah, that was a that was a great movie to kind of see him not do like this typical De Niro type of yeah. movie. Um, it it was nice. It was <laughs> I actually really enjoyed that movie. It was fun watching him do a comedy that didn't involve him being part of the mob. Like I was very happy. Right. No, that's what I'm saying. And like, right. and, I mean, it's, and it's him like fulfilling those. You know, those stereotypical roles where, like, you're old now, so you have to be this old guy. And uh, he just kind of ran with it. Like, there, speaking of that, there's another movie that's coming out with, um, uh, what's his name? Douglas. Not Robert Douglas. Who, which Douglas is You're talking about Michael Douglas? Michael Douglas, where he's playing Ben Franklin. And, no. uh, yeah, so he's Ben Franklin. And the whole motif, like the... The big poofy hair and the the like no. feather jacket. So he's playing Ben Franklin during um, the first Civil War, or not the first Civil War, like the the like the um, essentially the. Uh, oh my it's, God, it's just can't... it's called just Franklin. Yeah, just Franklin. So he's going over to France to convince France to fight with America against no. the British. So it's like it's like this big conspiracy movie where it's like who can you trust going into france i'm the only american who can you trust and uh i was like oh wow like that's that's probably the first movie that comes to mind that michael douglas is playing an old dude as an old dude i'm like he's Whoa. old in the ant-man movie but well, like i was just gonna but say they really, there. but they don't really talk about like it, the focus is not that he's old the focus is that he has, you know, he has the technology. But in this movie, sure. he is old, playing a period piece as an old guy. Like, it's, it's, it's compounded. I, just, I will never like another character other than his falling down character. <laughs> falling down is his best movie. I don't care what you I'm say. trying to remember, what was the movie with Demi Moore where she essentially tried to take advantage of him sexually, and he refused it, and then she sued him? That wasn't Basic Instinct, was it? No, Basic Instinct... Wasn't Basic Instinct with Sharon Stone? With the leg cross? That was the leg cross, yes. Demi Moore... Oh, you talking about uh, Fatal Attraction? Fatal Attraction? No, Disclosure. Oh, okay. Disclosure. So, and that's, for again, another Michael Crichton book. 
So the Jurassic Park guy just is laying down great stuff. Yeah, so it's a, it's a, a it, Michael Douglas is a senior executive at a cutting edge technology firm, and then he brings in um, what's her name, Demi Moore, to help kind of create this crazy merger to be like the ultimate tech company. So he and they're like former lovers or whatever, but Michael Douglas is like happily married with a kid, and then there's a moment where she still does what. Demi Moore was known to do in the 90s, which was just, you know, be that seductress, temptress yeah. person. So she gets, she like hits on him. It's late at night, as is tradition, late at night in the office. She hits on him. They kind of start getting a little heated, a little passionate. And then he's like, no, he said, no, no, I don't want to do this. I'm done with this. I don't want to do this. She keeps pushing it. She's like, you know, grabbing at his belt, doing all this crazy stuff. And then uh, he, he ends up like, kind of like push throwing her down and just literally runs away and then the rest of the story is how she's suing him for sexual abuse or there's like you know there's a huge hr meeting and they go back and forth and there's like okay was it was there a, a recording of this was there a voicemail of that and there the, the bigger theme is that the big boss that owns this company which i'm pretty sure is donald seller uh what's his name donald sutherland um, oh yeah, he's a good actor. So I'm pretty sure he's playing big evil boss man, and he manipulated Demi Moore into doing this to get Michael Douglas out, <laughs> so that the two of them can just go crazy with the money and make as much profit as humanly possible. Whereas Michael Douglas was trying to do it, quote the right way, where it's like you make a little bit of money when you could make a crazy amount of money. Um, you, you know, you know what that reminds me of? Mm. A couple movies. First one is Horrible Bosses. With, oh, with Jennifer um, Aniston. Jennifer Aniston. <laughs> yeah. Like that one where she's just like all of a sudden just trying to just take advantage of him. Mm -hmm. And he's like, no, like, I'm not doing that. And he's like the perfect actor for that. <laughs> yeah. I forget his name. He's so hilarious. A horrible boss. If you haven't seen it, Jennifer That's Aniston plays his hot like dentist and keeps trying to take advantage of like her. I don't know. What would you call him? Like a nurse? He's like an is assistant. That, is that what you call him? He's like a tech assistant or whatever you want to yeah, call him. Yeah, dental that. assistant. Yeah. yeah. Charlie, yeah, that I, was think, like, I think that's Charlie Day. That yes, that. yeah, D D Daniels or is it Day? Charlie Day. Yeah, dental assistant. Thank you. Jessica. And then, and, and then in the second movie, they like really lean into. Oh yeah. Like her yeah. wanting to help out, and he's like, you know what? I'll do one for the team, just so you. Can that's right. Out. That's right. <laughs> so the other movie that that reminds me of, I think, is Two for the Money, where it's oh, Al Pacino. Oh wow. Yeah. And uh, Al Pacino and Matthew McConaughey. Yeah, I think, and, yeah, I think you're right on that. Yeah, man. like so, and like in in like Al Pacino's so paranoid that he starts doing like all this crazy stuff on the side to kind of like test him. Like he left him alone with his wife, yeah, and to see if they would do something. And he's like watching them, saying he's going to Vegas, yeah, like that. I don't know why when you were describing that, like I got two two for the money and and horrible bosses. I'm not shocked that one of those is a sports movie. Oh, <laughs> like sports, all betting, comes back. sports betting, sports yeah. betting, yes, yeah. And then all of this reminds me of one of the other movies with Demi Moore, where it's like her and and, and Woody Harrelson, and uh, like they're at the run of their run of their luck or whatever, and they need they go to Vegas to try and make the money to pay for you know whatever woody harrelson is doing and uh they end up meeting a billionaire and the billionaire is like hey you know i i'll pay for everything if you give me one night with your wife and it's like i can't remember that freaking movie but like it's the, not wait, it's not kingpin is it no no no, no. kingpin is much <laughs> is much better than that and thinking of demi moore and kingpin would be a crazy i think yeah, I, don't know why. I, I think that one's called indecent indecent proposal Hold on. I, Something I I like that. Well, anyways, I, I ever, yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Indecent proposal. That yeah, so like she ends up going through with it. Oh, it's just sex. Like we're together. I've I've been with you. We've been running in the muck forever. Yeah, we've been right. building up together. Yeah, right. And then they end up like, of course, Woody Harrelson gets in of his course. head and goes nuts about it. Yeah. They end up separating. She's like some like property manager thing and but she does it for the the rich and the famous, you know, like that Channel Eleven TV show. The, All you right, know, Sal. Make your crib before it was make your crib. Show me your right, crib. Right, right, right. No, no, no. Yeah, cribs. That's right. MTV, MTV cribs. cribs. Yeah. All right. All right, Sal. Question is. Okay. You're offered a absorbent amount of money for okay. someone to take your wife for no. one night. Would you do? Would you no. do? It? No. No. 
at all. No, we're we're we're, we're surviving quite nicely, and we're in an incredible amount of debt. We'll just keep being in debt. It's fine. This is like life changing money, bro. No, Generational money that you're no. gonna be. Able it's the same really? concept of like, would you kill someone for a billion dollars? Like, no, I said no. It's you can't. I, you I can't, mean, who is it though? It doesn't matter. Does it matter? <laughs> I mean, it does it matter, matter if it's a billion? What would change your mind if, like, it didn't matter who was with your wife or whatever? Could I could I not get caught on the – well, on the one thing, all right. Yeah, so, see, there's too but, many caveats. If you can't do it without caveats, then you're not doing it. Nah, that's not true, though. Yeah, I wouldn't. No. Keep my morals strong. I'll stay straight-laced for life, and I'll just eat my debt until I die. I, I respect you, Sal, for that. You just can't. You do, why, why whim? Then it's like, then, like, what's the point of you if I can't rely on – Knowing that you're consistently with your morals, like you're always gonna say crazy jokes about you know crazy stuff, and that now all of a sudden if I make a crazy joke, like, sound too far. Okay, no, we have to. <laughs> this is the precedence, and you just keep moving forward with the way that things are set. I'm not saying I'm change. Saying, Everyone changes, right? It's fine, but like unbelievable I'm, scenarios are unbelievable on purpose. So who would have known how we would have reacted to one another if we met thir- you know, 25 years ago? How crazy would that have scenario been? I would have had you out. You would have been at the bars, at the clubs with me, and I, I don't, don't drink know. or anything, but we would have been tearing them down together. I don't we know. I think, I, think, uh, the shame. I think I would have convinced you to be playing Warhammer and D&D with me and then going to the casino like at midnight. Absolutely, but after all that, I'm telling you, I'd still have someone in my bed at night. Nah, I'm good with my pillow. <laughs> <laughs> give, me that, give me that nice big cold pillow between my legs so my ankles don't touch like everything's <laughs> it's, everything's good i'm just i'm just telling you i was like that back then so like but was, going going was... back to the original scenario of <laughs> is there a dollar amount that i would give up my wife for no i no. i'd go crazy really? I, i'm not a big share sure. i'd go crazy. i would i would go crazy too i absolutely would go crazy too i'd never be the same person but... again i'd never be the same person again to, to think that i would be willing to do that that she would be willing to say yes i'd immediately like question everything I, I, i'd go nuts i hate to admit it but i'm probably in the same boat you are i just i, I think like to too talk much. a little loosely about yeah, it i think too much yeah. I, I would too. I would, cause like I'd just be looking at her and she'd be smiling in her dreams. I'm like, oh, like, what are you smiling about? about? That yeah, it'd be like, right, like that meme. Like billionaire. It'd be that meme where the dude's sleeping soundly and the girl's <laughs> looking over. So I wonder what he's thinking about. And it's like I'm yeah. thinking about being alongside John Connor finding Terminators for the better good of the humanity. I'm not really thinking about other women. I'm thinking about no, jumping, I'm... jumping into the armor of a 40k Marine and showing those Terminators what's up. Like I'm not. What, what's like... funny? What's funny about those memes is when they think I'm thinking about other women. I am. <laughs> oh that's crazy. Those aren't me. Those aren't memes for me. Those are reality. This dude so. is like this dude is trying to live the life of being, uh, being clotheslined into the corner and falling down and then getting like the rakish the rakishi stink face from like Rhea Ripley yes. or something. Yeah. Oh my, bro. That happened Rhea by Rhea the Rhea way Rhea over the weekend. Rhea Rip- Give me a stink face, Rhea Ripley. So the, they were doing uh, there was like a house show, you know, like the on the on yeah, the yeah. thing. And uh, it was Rhea against Nia Jax. And, like, at the house shows, it's all funny. It's not about storylines or anything. Right. They're just having fun. Right, right, right. So there's a moment where um, Nia Jax gets knocked down into the corner. And Rhea is like, oh, like, do you want me to do it? She's, like, taunting to the crowd, you know, like, lifting up her, her boxer shorts into, into her butt or whatever. And then she ends up doing... The Rikishi stink face to Nia Jax, and the crowd goes crazy. And of course, everyone is like all about Rhea on the internet, so they're just going real hard to the paint about like you of know course. parsing it. And then there's a really funny section where Shayna Baszler, who is like an openly uh, oh, yeah. she's openly lesbian, she yeah. jumps in the ring, squats into the other corner, and is like, "Come on, Rhea, hit me with that! Hit me with that!" And she's, that would have been me. They, everyone's cracking up. She's covering her eyes. She's doing the exact same thing. It's almost like if you were to split screen it, it's like the exact same setup. It's so funny. And then Rhea picks up Nia Jax and points over at the corner, giggles, and leaves the ring. Yes. And then, like, uh, Did Shana... Did do it? She, yeah, the Nia does it. She does it, like, hardcore, way like nice. there's a lot of neck movement that's happening in this shenanigans. And then uh, Shayna Baszler gets up and she's looking at the crowd. She's like, oh, yeah, baby, that was awesome. I loved every second. And then turned and <laughs> saw that it was Nia. And she's like, 
Uh, oh god! Oh god! So uh, someone save me! <laughs> she rolls out and then she leaves the ring like in complete disgust. And Naya's like, "What? What's the problem? What's the problem? You can't handle all this. What's the problem? I thought I you were Naya. all about that. I can't, Naya. I'll take Naya. Yeah, you'd scream my hole just like she did. <laughs> I don't lie. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Hold yourself back. I set you up real good for that dunk. <laughs> you did, bro. You did. Bro, I, I'd take Nia Jack for sure. I know. I, do. I mean, I, maybe Nia Jack back in the day. No, I'd take her now. No, I can't handle this too much. No, it's never too much. I can't brother. handle it's all never that. Too much. Not, she'd be pushing back into nothing. I was like, I couldn't. I wouldn't be able to do anything. It's too much. Yeah, we find a way. Find a <laughs> You'd way. find a way. It's like Luke Skywalker SOB over here trying to figure it out. <laughs> just, just find a way. I'm telling you, the force is gonna be strong with me on that. No, one. no, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be Yoda and just like vanish. <laughs> that's, that's me. That's me. I'll just, you'll find me with the Ewoks singing the music. <laughs> that's what I'd be doing. Oh my God, the Ewoks are my favorite. <laughs> Oh, the Ewoks are my favorite. Oh, boy. Uh, so yeah, so that's, uh... <laughs> I like to I like to end it on something really quick. Okay, I like okay. you. I like you to give me your favorite Demi Moore movie. My favorite Demi Moore movie. I mean, I watch. Does she have to be the like accredited main actress, or is it just any movie? No, with Demi Moore in any it? any movie that she's in that she's not like a cameo or something, right? I'd like, probably say have... yeah that she has to definitely have like. A, a, an incredible amount of dialogue. She's yeah, essentially a sure. main character or a sub character. For, for sure. I would say that I watch. Um, oh man, that's that's tough because I have like four or five movies that just popped in my head, but they're like I I wouldn't give them the maximum amount of credit. Like I remember, probably the first movie I ever watched with Demi Moore in it was Ghost with yes. um same for me same for me patrick yeah, swayze Goldberg and patrick swayze yeah and like that was just a crazy movie thinking about this dead dude's ghost interacting like flicking paper in the subway i thought that was crazy and then like of course like the the uh like you're making the Wait, pottery what? scene or whatever oh the pottery scene is epic yeah i thought and i remember and the only reason that that movie sticks out more as i got older is because isn't the dude who like teaches him how to push people as a ghost? Isn't he the train guy in the Matrix movie? He is the train right? guy in the Matrix movie. So that's the only reason that that like ended up getting <laughs> decade long like engravings he, in my head because I only remember that guy from those two movies and that's and it. he played he played the same character almost and he was in trains in the damn uh, ghost movie. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So it's just like they really he really went hard to the paint. On uh, like the movies he did and the environment he was in. Yes. I'm pretty sure wasn't he in wasn't he in the second Batman movie with Michael Keaton? I thought he led like the circus people. I don't know. Now oh. now I could be thinking too Hold much on. about it. I'm almost Look. certain that he was in Batman. So we're what, talking, what we're talking Batman about Returns. We're talking about Vincent. Vincent uh, Chalabi. Yeah, yeah. Yes. All right. So I'm looking up his movies really quick. I'm almost certain he, is, he was he in is, Batman. He Returns. is. He is in Batman Returns, 1992. Good call. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess back to. <laughs> yeah, I went on a, tr a tangent with the ghost. Always. So yes, always. definitely, it would be a few good men at the top. Um, oh yeah. Because that's a. I love that movie. That, I, love I love that, that movie that. so much. Like um, Jack Nicholson, Jack Nicholson, and Tom Cruise. Like that was I love the thinking with a bat. Like that was something that like always got into my head. I yeah. love and like my Twitch chat just absolutely pointed out. GI Jane was a great movie. GI Jane wasn't I, like I, the I, most woman empowering. Yeah, movie. like what a crazy yeah. thing when she like. She's clearly getting taken advantage of by Aragorn. I can't remember the actor's name. And then she, like, headbutts him, beats the crap out of him, spits the blood in his face. Oh, I love that. That was such a, yeah. that was so cool. And then, because we were talking about it earlier, disclosure. So those are, like, yeah. my three, I get different versions of Demi Moore right, in each one. movie. Pick, pick one. A uh, few good men, then. Yeah, we're on but the that's same not, boat. But that's not because of Demi Moore, though. 
It's because of yeah. everything else that's happening in that movie. There were so that, many actors in that movie, too. Because it's like, not oh, only yeah. did you have those three, you had Tom Cruise, Jack Nicholson, and Demi Moore, but you had, um, was it, who, who was the other guy that you had? Um, you had um, well, Kiefer on. Sullivan, Kiefer, Kiefer Sutherland was in there. Kiefer Sutherland was the Kevin. Lieutenant. Wasn't Kevin Bacon like the other Kevin lawyer Bacon or whatever? Captain, yeah, he was Captain Jack Ross. Who helped? Uh, who helped? Tom Cruise. That was that was uh, Kevin Kevin Pollock. Yeah, Kevin Pollock. Cuba Gooding Jr. Cuba was in there. It's like Jr. a random yes. dude. Yes. Like that. Yes. That was such a crazy. And I'm pretty sure that. Um... Oh, and then how about the dude from ER? Remember Noah? Uh, was it Wiley? Well, Noah Wiley or whatever. Oh. Yeah, he was yeah, in yeah, there. Yeah. There were so many him. good people in there. And I'm almost certain that like the writer Aaron Sorkin that he was like a random extra in that. I'm I'm almost certain that he like randomly showed up in that you know what jt walsh he was another one yes. that was JT another walsh. big time actor i'm trying to think he of the was, other movies that i remember he was in the negotiator that was a great yeah. because he was like oh the, that was a great movie well, he was samuel. who was he? yeah samuel jackson and john, john travolta wasn't no he? no no no, no. <laughs> I, oh, I want you to remember Broken that Arrow. is kevin spacey <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you were, yeah, yeah. but Kevin Spacey before he went nuts. Kevin Spacey, oh well, yeah, before no, before they revealed that he was like, yeah, he was like a, he's voice like, yeah, he's like in the eighties, yeah. yeah. But I remember yeah. him from Negotiator because the JT Walsh because he was, what's the name of the 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 section of the police department that Internal Affairs? He led the Internal oh, yeah. Affairs group, I and, did, I'm, yeah. and I'm pretty sure JT Walsh was one of the dads in um, Pleasantville. I don't know if you remember that with Toby oh, McGuire. Oh, I love that. Toby where they McGuire, go back yes. into that, that 1920s yes. TV show, they get stuck in it or whatever. Yes. Oh, my God, dude. Pleasant what was, what was that movie. other TV show? TV show. What was that other movie with the actors passed away, but they get stuck into a TV and they're going to. Yeah, take it in state too. Stay tuned. Oh where he God, buys dude. like that giant dish that's in his backyard had, or whatever. Remember, I, remember when I told you about my dad buying a satellite dish? That was the kind of satellite yeah. dish we had in our yard. John Huge. Ritter. John Ritter. John Ritter. Yeah, John Ritter. That was a great movie. I love that because it was so dude. like he's addicted to watching TV. Yeah, and then he tries to get through. Like, wasn't it like the <laughs> devil that convinced them to buy the it dish was. or whatever? It was. Oh, it came man. in and, and you know, sold him the dish, and then I'm he gets sucked in. Trying to remember in. who was the actual devil because he was the dude from oh. Beetlejuice. Like he was in it... that too. Something Jones. Oh my God! Hold on. Oh, side note: they came out with the new trailer for the second Beetlejuice movie. I saw that. It looks good. They have Jennifer, what's her name, the girl that plays Wednesday yeah. in it. So, like, you can't go wrong with that. She's in every horror movie now. Although she stepped out of Scream, she did like Scream Twelve, it's and then said, um, "Jeffrey Jones is it Jeffrey?" Yeah, Jones? Jeffrey Jones. He's the demon yep. or whatever. Yes, yes, bro. Man, Spike, what a great you play Spike. What a great bro, movie. My favorite part of that movie is when they come into the Salt and Pepper. You got to shake it up or whatever, shake it off. I don't um, remember. And they're doing the music video and they come in. And he's got like this like <laughs> yes. thing on his head. That's and right. <laughs> I love the one where they they change the channel and they turn into like cartoon mice. That's the one I remember. Oh the most. yes, yes. Oh my. God. And then I keep thinking, wasn't there like a scene where, um, they're doing like a hockey thing, or maybe I'm just thinking of Running Man. When no, no, it wasn't. No, the it was not. no, they they did. They put him into the hockey thing, and all of a sudden, Spike's got all the all the guys are wearing red and black, and he's like trying to run and get out of there, and they hit the controller into the goal net, so yeah. he goes flying into the net to change it, and he ends up, I guess, in like a western where he's his wife is tied to a a, a, a thing that's about to blow up, and the train's coming, and it's out of uh, it's out of control. Right, we were just talking about that last episode. Train's out of control. It's about to hit this wagon that she's tied up to, and he can't find the controller or whatever. Oh my god, I love that movie, dude. That, oh, that was you know what? Movie. My chat was bringing it up. Vigo Mortensen. That was Aragorn. Vigo, yeah, yeah, yeah Aragorn. They're talking yeah. about Eastern Promises being a top tier movie for Vigo Mortensen. Agreed. Nice. I liked V. I liked Eastern Promises. What was the one where he was like a dad that went back to his old hometown, and then the Bob caught up, caught up with him or whatever. Oh my God! What was that movie called? Not Green Book. Green Book is also good if you haven't seen Green Book, where he's like a mob guy that helps uh, uh, one of the. Wait, wait, it's not. It's not Eastern Pro. No, you said Eastern. No, Promises, Eastern right? Promises. History of Violence. History of Violence. History of Violence. History of Violence. Yeah. yeah, The Road was good too. That that was a weird, post-apocalyptic like father-son movie. 
But that was really good. Now, the best post uh apocalyptic father son movie is the one Will Smith and his son. <laughs> oh, where they crash land on that planet? No. Was that Earth? <laughs> yeah, that was horrible. I'd rather watch. Oh, now I can't remember how bad it was. Hold on. I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna explain it to you. That's how horrible this movie was. But I'd rather watch this horrible movie than watch After Earth. Oh God, where is it? I know who's in but, it, but I if I tell it, I'd rather watch Battlefield Earth with John Travolta, oh, John Travolta than watch oh After God. Earth with Will Smith and his son. No, any I'd rather day. watch. I'd rather watch Waterworld with Kevin. Cousins. Oh, Waterworld's good though. Oh, you're terrible. Waterworld is great. Waterworld is great. Oh, you're ridiculous. No, don't you're be ridiculous. mad that he's like oh, essentially you're playing. Ridiculous. Well, who was he playing? He's essentially like a postman in another movie. Was it? Wasn't it called Postman, where he's like the only person that delivers mail on like in the United States? He's essentially doing the same thing in Waterworld. He's just delivering this girl with a map on her back, right? And he's trying to yes. avoid. Who is King Koopa? Dennis Hopper. <laughs> he's trying to avoid Dennis Hopper. Oh man, Bone Tomahawk. Oh, see, Bone Tomahawk was a great one. That was with um. Oh my god, that was with Kurt Russell, I think. Bone Tomahawk. Yeah, that's a that? that's a great western, like within the last ten years of western movie. Taking of uh, what was that the is, was it Yuma Kurt, Yuma Kurt to Russell. Yuma to three ten with oh, uh, that with, was a great one with uh, yeah. Batman and give me Christian who Bale. Was this? Yeah, Christian Bale is Batman yeah. and was it Russell Crowe? I thought it was Russell Crowe. I'm pretty sure it's Russell Crowe. So it's Batman and Gladiator are trying yes. to try to get a bad guy to this on a yeah, train to like a three ten yeah. That was a good one. We got the uh, in my chat. We got Never Ending Story was a great movie. And oh Space yeah, Cowboy. yeah, Space Cowboy. It's just as bad as Leprechaun in Space. Oh, yeah, Leprechaun in Space. You know what? There was this. There was this old school sci fi movie where and it was like circa late 80s mid to late 80s i can never remember the name but you're following this human who's essentially like you know the fabio of humans or whatever like he's a very good looking person but he's a boxer and he's abducted by oh my god he's abducted by like this weird alien ship that's like a mega ship there's like a city within the ship kind of deal and they they just box all these different species together. So there's like a huge giant worm that has like, you know, eight arms and it's like boxing people and like the human beats that up. And like the big bad guy is this like half pig, half robot that's like running the underworld boss of this like space city. And what I don't know. I can't remember the name, but it's so is it, is it the, the last starfighter? Nah, let me look. Cause it's really bad. No, that that look that looks way too good. It looks worse than that. <laughs> it looks way worse than that. Yeah, no, that that looks way too good of a movie. It looks way worse than that. So it's like a sci-fi boxing movie versus robot pig. It could be the arena. It's arena. literally the arena. Man versus monster. Man versus monster yeah. arena. So yeah, if you want a really bad yet this 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 is the movie that shaped I'm my life. It right now. <laughs> this is the movie that shaped my life. If it wasn't for bad '80s sci-fi movies, I never would be as big of a movie buff as I am today. Hold on, I'm I'm showing this to my TikTok. Yeah, so the trailer is fan, and it's literally exactly how I explained it. All bets are off. It's a corrupt intergalactic fighting competition, and he got so picked. He got picked. To be like the representative of the humans, and the humans yes. that are part of this are stupid. They don't know anything. He has it's to so like bad. he has to win to save like a princess or something. But like the big evil robot pig wants the princess for his own, and there's like a centipede or something that he. I swear it's a centipede or a worm. It's a worm. And, it's uh, like a roach looking worm. Yeah. It's really really bad, bro. But the it's, trailer it's is phenomenal. It, it, it was part of that generation of we used to go to like those off brand like it wasn't blockbuster or dollar video it was like a mom and pop version of yeah, that right 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 and they we used to rent this one movie called robot jocks 
where oh you told us about this movie. robot yeah. jocks is like it's god's yes. gift to cinema in my opinion because <laughs> it's so bad essentially what happens is countries don't have war anymore it's russia robot versus usa robot and we all want like this forest section in canada so the only way we can get it is if we fight in these robots for it and whoever wins gains territory and it's just global territory and you pretty much have like an inept moron who's like the best American robo jock ever, fighting like this corrupt Russian, as is tradition in the eighties, who, who has like a spider leg robot, and they just fight it out in an arena. Then the good guy ends up getting pushed onto like civilians. He retires because he doesn't want to do it anymore. They bring him back in because there's like cloning involved. And he's like, the clone doesn't count. She's cheating. And then the Russian guy's like, I don't care. I want to fight you. Let's fight. And then they fight in space. And then they crash land in the desert. And then there's like a humongous like penis uh, chainsaw that pops out of the Russian's robot and like saws the dude's monster. In oh, oh my God. Oh, dude, it's, it's insane. It's horrible, but, like, the music is top tier. The dialogue has, like, it's all almost one-liners for the entire movie. That is awesome. Oh, it's so bad, and it's it's so good. That is awesome. There's another sci-fi movie that was, like, a rip-off of Star Wars right as Star Wars was coming out. And my dad and I used to watch that all the time, but I can't remember... The movie, it's like, it's like a weird combination of Star Wars and, oh, what was the movie, or what's the TV wasn't show? It, wasn't, the... It, wasn't it Spaceballs? No, it's not Spaceballs. That's a great movie. That That's yeah, a collectively a great, movie. great movie. This this is, this is a bad movie that just so happens to be great. But it was like a weird combination of like Lost in Space, like the family, like the family gets literally lost in space, and Star Wars kind of combined together because there was like a big robot that wanted to protect the pilot but the robot is like neon red and it has saws and scissors and kitchen knives attached to it like it's really bad <laughs> i have to ask my dad he he would know it like at the drop of a hat with me just Guar explaining guarantee, it to him guarantee, guarantee he's gonna put it in the comments because you're i can't wait like, i'm i am excited dad. for all those comments like that's this was, is the one was time it, was it crawl it was not Crawl. Crawl is also an amazing movie that's pretty much D and D in the eighties. Crawl is great, dude. Crawl is like Crawl has so many like famous English actors in it. Like Liam Neeson was one of them, and he did that as like a nobody. Oh man, Crawl is an amazing movie. I have the I, I literally have to... look at this. If you're on my stream, look. I have the original print of Crawl, the book, in my possession. That's been passed down through generations in my family. <laughs> this book was released in, good lord, let me find it. Hold on one second, please. 1983, original, in like wow. not great condition, but it's good. Oh, I loved Crawl, dude. That's awesome. Yeah, it's That's so awesome. bad. It's so good. Yeah. Well, we're way past our Yeah, we're, I got, this, this is, is way stuff. horrible, dude. This is bad. <laughs> this is bad. I might cut this all out and, like, have it be, like, a bonus thing. Because it's literally <laughs> been a half hour of me just talking about really bad 80s sci-fi movies. I feel like that's our next episode, bro. It's really yeah. bad 80s movies. I could literally spend a whole hour just talking to you about Crawl. Like, with, with no references. I could put this book in the next house. And tell you everything about Crawl, almost line by line, scene by scene. I love Crawl. I'm addicted. That's awesome. That's it's great. Awesome. It's great. Okay, so thank you everyone <laughs> for, <laughs> for staying along and helping us out and uh, getting through our insanity. Uh, we yes. really appreciate you all. Appreciate you all being here with uh, with our NBOT channel. We're still holding strong at 116, so it is natural growth, and I love every second of it. Um, we have an awesome amount of hours that have been watched like we we're almost past 1100 which is a crazy number that's really crazy that is crazy are 87 80 88 episodes now? yeah 80, this is that's 87 crazy. but like 86 episodes almost taking us to 1100 hours is yeah. an insane thing that i uh, like i am head over heels about that um 
but yeah thank you everyone who subscribed thank you to the future subscriptions that are coming in we appreciate you all coming there of course all the comments the thumbs up the likes the dislikes the shares that you guys do because i got some notifications that some people were sharing some of our videos which is cool. that's awesome that's awesome. Uh, our our instagram and facebook is starting to get a little bit more traction uh, I'm not even going to talk about TikTok because who knows where that's going to be in the next three to six months. <laughs> and it was all my fault. I'm sorry, mush, America. Mush. Yes, <laughs> I'm mush. so sorry, America. It's not like it's China's fault. It's my fault. But we're no, not going to get you. political. It's me. You're, you are the problem. It's me. It's me. I yes. did two reels and suddenly the internet doesn't like TikTok anymore. So whatever. Then he, he posts some old video that gets all of a sudden 500 views on it. And then they're like, the government said, that's they're enough. They're like, whoa, relax, Sal. That's, that's it. Enough. We he's don't need your clips from China. four years he's ago, done. okay? Yes, he's done. But, uh, yeah, so thank you, everyone, for all the follows you've been doing. Don't forget to jump on our Discord where you get to see all of the hyperlinks for everything that's associated with NBOT, myself, Cecilio, and Enrique, all of our personal links. And you get to see all of our fun, crazy banter that we do that's pretty much exclusive to Discord. The Discord. So, uh, yeah, we thank you all for being there. We appreciate you all for being there. I will continue doing what I can to slam out as much custom thumbnails as humanly possible. I have four ideas for this one alone that are not all crawl. I, I'm pretty sure I can do one without crawl. I had one in my head, and then we started talking about crawl, and I lost all train of thought. So, it's got to be something from Stay Tuned. It's probably like the, yeah, the I'm gonna, I will find something. I will find yeah. maybe something with Arnold and Johnny Knoxville. There's so many opportunities. There is a lot. There's a lot for things to happen, and it's all because of our, our us just losing track, like what I'm Always. doing right now. So, exactly. <laughs> thank Always. you again, everyone. We'll catch you on the flip side. And as always, stay classy. The one thing that we don't lose track of is the Detroit sucks. <laughs> Detroit <laughs> absolutely blows. Your pizza blows. Put yes. it in a circle, and even then, it would still be bad. Just stop it. Okay, not even get better. Just stop it. It's Detroit's fault. Okay, see you all later. Have a good night. Take care. Take care.